In this video, we're taking a look at the new Insta360 ONE X2. Could this be your ultimate travel camera? We'll find out in this review. Hey there, welcome to the video. I'm Mark Brown from Editor's Keys. And if you're new here, consider subscribing if you're into filmmaking or editing, as we have a ton of videos all about that. So just a heads up, this is not a paid review. Insta360 did send this in so we could check it out, but all of the opinions you're hearing will be my own. So let's check out this little device. Okay, so first of all, let's talk image quality. Now this can shoot in 5.7K, which actually sounds pretty good, right? Because almost all cameras that we use today are 4K. But you've got to remember, this is a 360 degree camera. So that 5.7K is for the entire image all the way around. So actually, when you're filming, just say front on and using it a little bit more like an action camera, uh, you'll only get about sort of 1080p, just above. And that's a little disappointing because that's almost the same image quality as last year's Insta360, which was pretty good. I did really enjoy that camera, but I'm hope I was hoping that Insta360 would up it a little bit. Now, it's not a bad thing. You know, the image quality is still really good, as you'll see in some of these shots. But let's talk about some other big improvements to this year's model. First of all, they've got a bigger 55% larger battery. And let me tell you, that makes a huge difference. If you own the original Insta360 ONE X, you'll know it didn't last too long. Mine, sort of by the end of the year, was getting about 20 minutes uh, on a shoot. So I couldn't really use it for holidays and I'd always be charging it. This, I've been filming with this on a recent trip to Cornwall. I used it a lot of the day and I'd still come back with about 50 to 60 60% of battery life. So not only is it a bigger battery, but I genuinely feel like Insta360 have done something else to the software to help it reduce uh, the consumption of battery too. And I don't know if they definitely have, but it definitely feels like it. So that's a big plus there. Another great feature, this is now waterproof down to 10 meters. With the original Insta360 ONE X, you had to have a dive case if you wanted to take it anywhere near water. But as you'll see in my shots, I took this into the sea in Carbis Bay in Cornwall, and it worked really, really well. Now, Insta360 did say to me that ideally you should still use a dive case with this if you want the stitching to look perfect. So this is okay if you wanna you know, pop it in a, the bath, a puddle, a pool, and just film in one direction. That that works fine, as you can see from some of my shots. But if you want that entire 360 sphere perfectly stitched together, then you will still need the dive case. But it's great to know that you can now use this in the rain. And the last massive improvement is this new 360 degree rotatable screen. You see the old Insta360 had more of an old style menu and it was a little bit fiddly. And of course you couldn't monitor yourself at all. Now, of course the good thing with a 360 camera is that really you don't really need to see that it's pointing at you because it will be because it shoots the entire scene but this does make it a little bit easier if you are vlogging and I certainly think it makes the menus much better the screen is a big plus for the X2 now before we jump into some of the features of the Insta360 ONE X2 there's one thing I think you still really need if you're going to buy an Insta360 and it's this invisible selfie stick and they call it an invisible selfie stick because you can attach this to the camera and within software, they will edit this out as you can see in my videos. So it's really good if you wanna get a drone style shot, if you wanna do some selfie shots and look like someone else is holding the camera. Because I find as well, not only does it, you know, is it good for vlogging, you can extend this kind of all the way out uh, by a few feet, it gets rid of the selfie stick. But also if you don't use this and you just use this handheld, what you'll find is that in the bottom of your shot, you'll see some blurry fingers. So I do think you need at least some kind of tripod to put this on if you are filming with the Insta360 ONE X2. But now we've had a little tour of the device, let's talk about some of the new features in this version. Now, one of the main reasons I love the Insta360 is for the flow state stabilization. Now, this gives you unreal stabilization. You know, even the A7S III that I'm using is great, but the stabilization is pretty poor. And when you, you, you're traveling and you wanna use an action camera, that's really the main thing. If you're walking up and down hills, if you're on the beach, you want your shots to be nice and stable. And this just does a fantastic job of getting really stabilized shots. It can even level the horizon. And then if you pair that with some hyperlapse, you can get some really cool shots coming out of the Insta360 that I don't think you can really get with any other camera. Yes, cameras like GoPro are very, very smooth, but you still lose the ability to reframe your shot after you've done it. So flow state 
is a big plus for the Insta360. Now, flow state stabilization existed in the first Insta360. However, I wanted to point this out again. This is just some ACE technology within the Insta360, which gives you unreal stabilization. Just check these shots out here. Now, if you're the sort of person who does a lot of biking, skateboarding, car videos, or surfing, this makes a real great option as the software does a fantastic job of stabilization. Next, it has Steadicam and a new kind of front-facing camera mode. So you can use it much more like a standard action camera. So the original Insta360 would just film in kind of 360 degree mode. This one, you can set it up if you just wanna film um, about, I think it's about 150 degrees. So in that sense, you can use it like a normal camera. But if you do that, you then do lose the ability to kind of spin or change your shot in the edit. So I, you know, I found that I have, you know, I've tried this out and I have used it. It works well, but in all honesty, I think I would rather just record in 360 just because if something happens behind the camera or to the side of you, you've still got that shot. And I think if you want to buy this camera just to use it as a front facing camera, I think there are better cameras out there. However, if you're doing action kind of stuff, if you're doing surfing, as I've mentioned, this is a great camera because it films everything around you. So let's talk about the 360 degree capture of this camera. This is just the best reason to own an Insta360. I tell you what, let's just cut to some shots I did in Cornwall so you can see exactly how this works. So one thing I love about the Insta360, and you'll probably hear me go on about this time and time again, is that with just this one shot, you can show any aspect. So I'm here at the top of the cliff in um, Cornwall, and I can show you the shot behind me of the beach there, and uh, everyone on the beach. I can show you the shot behind me, this side of the cliff, the cliff face and the sea. I can show you a boat that I can see there. And with any other camera, this wouldn't be possible unless you keep moving around, you know. Um, it's, it, it always happens, doesn't it? Sometimes you'd be filming yourself, you'll be filming a subject over there, and then what happens? Something happens to your right or left and you've missed that shot. But I can show you anything. I can show you those people walking there. I can show you that rock in front of me there. I can show you my wife taking a photo behind me over there. And I'm not doing this live now. This is just recording the whole 360 image and I'm just choosing in the edit where I want the camera to be pointed. So it's just, it's so hard to get your head around, but it's such a great feature. So one thing I want to point out is that the selfie stick is actually pretty cool. They can edit it out with AI uh, within the editing software. So it kind of looks like you've got a little mini drone following you whenever you film. And uh, if you get a really long selfie stick, you can kind of pull off some drone style tricks and shots, which is really good. So again, you know, obviously this is facing me, let's turn it around and you can see the beach and we've got both of those shots with this one camera. Really, really good, especially if you sort of miss something as well. Another great feature in the new version is an advanced version of Deep Track. Now, what this means is, let's say you've got a friend skateboarding and they kind of go off to the left. If you're using a normal action camera, as soon as they go out of the camera's shot, obviously you've lost them. With the Insta360, let's say your friend uh, skateboards over there and you've just got this on a tripod, what you can do within the edit, you can draw a box around you or your friend's uh, body and the camera will do the rest. It will actually do all of the, the, the tracking, follow them around. So really handy if you're doing something like uh, skiing, let's say, skateboarding, any kind of action which moves a lot, this does a great job of that. And it just also means you can leave this on a tripod. So let's say you're filming by yourself, 
and you want the camera to follow you around, this can do that. Now within the app, there's something called Shot Lab, and this is where you can get super creative with the Insta360 ONE X2. Now the first thing I tried was the fly lapse. Now I was walking around with the Insta360 just held up on the selfie stick. I wasn't moving it around at all, I was just filming forward. Now what you can do within the app on your iPhone, desktop, or on an iPad, is you can put something on called fly lapse, and this will sort of re-edit your footage and make it look like you were flying a drone. So check out these shots here. It's just a really cool thing you can do. Maybe you're somewhere where you can't actually take a drone or you just want a different style shot. This is done automatically by the editing software. It's not something you have to do and it works really great. Next up in the shot lab is something I really enjoyed and it's called the fly through. Now you simply attach the Insta360 to the selfie stick and then you can essentially fly it through objects that look impossible and seriously would be impossible even with an FPV drone. So you can see in this shot here, we went through a park bench and then we took it and then we flew through a sculpture on the edge of the cliffs. Now, how cool does that look? And you're probably wondering, how is that done? So it's actually really simple. In the software, all you do is you start moving your camera around a little bit like a drone, just kind of uh, pan very slightly, just shift it up and down. And then when you take it through an object, you, you mark an in point on the app. And then you mark another out point there, and then you continue to pull your shot around. So I'll show you how that's done now. And that just works really, really well. It just opens up the door for so many cool shots that you couldn't do with a normal camera and you couldn't even do with a drone. And again, it just looks so good. So that's another shot lab feature that I really, really enjoyed. So now let's talk about editing. How do you actually get the footage off and how can you edit the footage? Now, there's two ways of doing it. You can do it on the desktop using Insta360's studio software and they have plugins for programs like Adobe Premiere. Now that's the best way to use it if you wanna get the best footage possible and it's what they recommend at Insta360 because you can export in ProRes and H.265. So definitely do that if you want some really, really high quality footage. But I actually like editing on the iPhone app. I just find it enjoyable to do. I can sit on the sofa with a coffee and I can create these little videos. And it's really, really simple. You've got all of the editing tools there. And the best bit about it is that it's actually super fast. And I find it faster editing on my phone or my iPad than I do using my MacBook Pro. So it's super simple. And it just takes some of the hassle out of editing 360 footage that you might get with other brands of cameras. So that's a look at the Insta360 ONE X2. Now the big question, would I recommend this? First of all, let's talk about it as if you already own the Insta360 ONE X from last year. If you already own that, the image quality is fairly similar. So if you're looking for a bump in image quality, I don't think I would upgrade, but there are a couple of reasons why I would upgrade if you did have last year's model. And number one is battery life. The battery life is so much better than last year's. It was one of the main reasons why I ended up not taking out the Insta360 as much because the battery would just die very, very quickly. So for me, the battery life is important and probably worth the upgrade. And the other thing I like to do is go swimming with the 360 camera and just film fish and things when we're on holiday. So for those two reasons, I probably would upgrade, but if you're someone who just uses it as an action camera, in that case, I probably wouldn't upgrade because the image quality hasn't changed that much. Now, if you're the second kind of person who doesn't have a 360 camera at all, and you're thinking about this as maybe a main camera or a B-roll camera, then again, I think there's two kind of sides there. If you want a main camera, I would say it's good but there's definitely better image quality out there to be had from something like a GoPro, especially if you're just using it to vlog because a GoPro can film in 4K front on and unfortunately the Insta360 cannot. So you will get better image quality from something like a Sony ZV-1 or a GoPro. Now, that said, those cameras do not have some of the cool features like that incredibly smooth flow state stabilization. So for me, this is a fantastic b-roll camera you know i've been doing car reviews i've just recently bought a tesla so i've been filming some shots from inside the car and i think this works fantastic because when you're busy doing something else you don't want to keep moving a camera around and this 
just parked up on a tripod or on your car's roof means you get every single shot, front, back, left, right, up, down, you've got it there. If you're on holiday, maybe you like your action sports like cycling, as I've mentioned, with a normal camera, you're only facing forward, unless you move it, of course. But with this, you can be facing forward, say you're going downhill on a mountain bike, you can film forward. But if your friend's next to you, you've got that shot too. So when you come to the edit, not only have you got the ability to change the shot, but you can use both the shots. So if you wanna have the front facing shot and the left facing shot, and then you want a right facing shot, all from the same time period, you can do that. You can just duplicate the shots and just choose the different angle. So this does something that no other camera does, any other normal camera. So I would recommend this and definitely have it in your bag. It's probably for me, not a camera that I'm gonna use every time we go filming. It's not gonna replace our studio camera. It's probably not gonna replace my iPhone for some videos that we do. But if I go on holiday, am I taking this? 100%. Yes. Now let me know what you thought of the image quality coming from this camera in the comments section below. Do you have one already or are you thinking of getting one? Let me know and I'll put a link in the description as well to our friends over at Wex where you can grab this camera today if you want to grab one. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.